give you a quick introduction to the journal and why the real purpose of the journal is, uh, from our endpoint is to really build an interdisciplinary community around this new field uh, of infodemiology that has just become so impactful because of COVID and is developed really rapidly. So the idea is to create a safe space and a home for people who want to engage in this field and to move it forward. So what is infodemiology? Um, generally speaking, it's describing and analyzing health information and communication patterns, such as on the web, social media, et cetera, for health purposes. But more complexly, it's the science of distribution and determinants of information medium or in a population with the aim to inform public health and public policy. And both of these are from Gunther Eisenbach, which is who is the uh, the uh, creator of the JMIR series. So he was one of the first to kind of pilot and, you know, really talk about this concept that we could use inf information systems and data from different sources to inform our understanding of disease determinants. So I come from a traditional background. I'm actually a policy person first before I was into the epidemiology space. And so the way I look at it is it's a form of syndromic surveillance but now it's extending and it's becoming its own uh, area because we are so connected now um, and because there's so many different forms of information that we interact with every day now. So the epidemiology traditionally have been forecast diseases. So a lot of epidemiology picture of infectious diseases. Um, and most of my lab has been working on it. But it more broadly, epidemiology can be used to analyze forms of health behavior and most importantly, generate closer to real-time insights. So we were asked by NIDA uh, about six months ago to find more people talking experiences with overdose death or overdose with uh, substance use because a lot of the um, epidemiology-related data is, is a bit lagging behind what's actually going on in the real world. So that's a real important use case for infodemiology is to provide more real-time insights into emerging public health issues. But with COVID, we've seen this big shift and uh, you know, this space that we need to invest in. So I want to acknowledge our colleagues at WHO, we've worked with many of them as well, who are pushing this space. They're really making an investment in capacity building, training, and some of the that is being generated right now, really trying to uh, push this, this field forward. So really great work by international organizations going on. And uh, again, COVID has really made this field just more important. And importantly, um, this is a decades old figure from Gunther, but you know what it's saying is that our traditional epidemiology focus has been on generating evidence for public health professionals and policymakers, and to also impact the way that we design interventions. And what we're looking for is of course, uh, how this infodemiology layer of data can inform that. And at the same time, there are so many new forms of media emerging. So whether it be different internet sites, mHealth you know, um, delivery of information, social media, of course, being even more ambiguous today than it was you know, 10 years ago. And then things that are really fascinating like Dear Pandemic, which we learned about on the first day um, from Allison, which is really just a homegrown and also a very directed uh, community, online community of people talking about their experiences with the COVID-19 pandemic. So there's so many new forms of information that are really exciting and understanding the way that diseases are evolving and how our public health responses are reacting, a lot of it is now digital. Um, so really quickly about the journal itself, uh, there's two editors in chief, I'm one of them. Um, and what we tried to design with our editor in chief roles is I am more in the role of the infodemiologist with the, with the experience more on the technology and the innovation side. And Cynthia is uh, a renowned uh, scholar in the space of health literacy. So we're really trying to, um, you know, engage with communities that deal with health literacy and health communication, but also our core infodemiology uh, audience. And so you also may know that the JMR um, family of journals has lots of different journals. So there are a lot of journals that focus more on health behavior, but we'll be for focusing more on this intersection between health literacy and infodemiology. Some sections that we uh, have started are around, of course, the infodemic itself, um, trying to speak more to practitioners and how to train people. So understanding how 
uh, public health professionals react and engage and interact with this, this type of data. And also looking at underserved areas like health equity, um, policy, um, health and risk communication, which is a broad field as well, but bringing it into the epidemiology space. Uh, and then, of course, these very salient issues to today, which are misinformation and a lot of the vaccine hesitancy information that we've talked about throughout this conference. So some main journal objectives, and I'll be closing pretty soon, are that um, we want to build an interdisciplinary and collaborative community to advance the field of epidemiology. I really feel like um, if we don't have interdisciplinary studies as part of the focus of this journal, we won't be able to tackle these complex health issues. So, you know, bringing in computer scientists, bringing in people in the communications field, bringing in social scientists, bringing in epidemiologists and com computational epidemiology, bringing all those people together to solve common problems is really one of the core areas of the journal. We also want to address underserved topics in the field of epidemiology. We don't address enough health equity issues enough in, in the work that we do. We don't address a lot of non-communicable disease issues, and we need to bring those fields in and include them in this conversation. And then um, I'm big on advancing uh, the methodology. Uh, a lot of us use Twitter uh, to do our studies, but we have to start looking at other forms of data um, to inform what's going on in the digital sphere, uh, because a lot of these data sets are biased and we want to look at you know, a larger community of online users. And then most importantly, um, really exploring the interplay between how we connect the health promotion and intervention uh, community to what we do in the epidemiology community, which is a lot of passive listening and passive um, you know, surveillance. So bridging those two together, how do we scale, understanding what people are saying to how we design interventions and then explore ethics, policy and governance issues uh, with the practitioner community as well to apply that research in a way that can have an impact.